to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying a puzzle by Clover, a meme rista, called Wisdom. Now, I don't know why it's called Wisdom, but I can tell you some things about this puzzle. It has been solved over 80 times on Logic Masters Germany, and it still has a 97% approval rating, which is really extraordinary. You tend to find that the puzzles over there that have very high ratings um, have only been solved by, you know, a dozen people. Um, and obviously, if you've sweated blood and tears to get to a solution, you tend to think more highly of a puzzle, I always think. So when a puzzle is slightly easier, and this is only three stars out of five for difficulty, to maintain that level of, you know, everyone solving it, basically saying, I love this puzzle, is really hard. It's a really hard skill, or a really hard thing to achieve. So very well done to Clover and Meme Rista, two of my favorite setters, so I'm not very surprised. Um, but I am looking forward to having a go at this. But I've got loads of news to you about first. Let me start uh, with the big news about Domino Sudoku, which is finally out on Android. Those of you who follow us on Twitter, which is at Cryptic Cracking, if you want to know our handle over there, will know this already. It came out last night, um, so that is that's really good news. It's been a long time coming, but we really hope you enjoy it. Um, the way it works is you download the basic app. That's got, I think, seven free puzzles in it by Prasanna Sashadri, so everyone should download that. And then Domino Sudoku you can buy as an add-on to that, that basic app. Uh, and that features puzzles by people like Clover. So it's really good. It really is. We've been delighted by the feedback so far, and we really hope you enjoy it. So that's, that's the big news on the app front. Um, next, well, it's a 22nd wedding anniversary today, isn't it? For Randy and Terry, Randy and Terry Miller, I want to say, um, I hope I've got your surname right. And Terry, I just want to tell you that you are definitely one of my very favourite people. So I hope you have a brilliant day today. I think an anniversary is certainly an excuse for cake, isn't it? So I hope you have an absolutely uh, great celebration. 22 years, that is, that's a good effort. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy this video as well. Um, now, next, more of you have managed to solve Joseph Namer's um, Sudoku hunt over on Patreon. This was our Patreon reward for July, an equal sum lines hunt, and very well done to the following. Jose Cusco, Pulverizing Pancake, Ivon Koch, I have to say that one slightly carefully, uh, Tim McCaskey, Andrew Passarotti, uh, Leonardo Trigiani, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, Barry Spatz, uh, Simon Lacey, Daniel Abrams, uh, David Roth, Scott Nakamura, David Anderson, Ben Needham, Brett Muller, Tony Van Der Peet. Um, now, Tony, thank you very much for offering to buy me a beer or two if I'm ever in uh, New Zealand. I hope one day I will be able to take you up on that. I would love to go to New, New Zealand. And Dorothea from Leipzig. All of you, fantastic solving. You were correct. And there's still five days left for those of you who are still battling with the hunt. Now, some more big news. Look at this. Modular Lines Puzzle Pack. And there are two of them, no less. So this is the sort of creation or the idea of full deck and missing a few cards. And um, their puzzle featured in Mark's video last night. Um, so uh, those of you who don't know, these are two very serious maths professors, uh, world famous <laughs> maths professors. And um, they've come up with this idea called modular lines. And a modular line is, imagine a line in a Sudoku. And each sequential position on the line has to contain um, one of the three modulo three remainders. So if you like, so one of them has to be one, four, seven. The next one would have to be two, five, eight. The next one would have to be three, six, nine. So you have to basically make sure each set of three sequential numbers or sequential cells on the line contains one of the one, one digit from each of those sets. And it leads to some really amazing logic. And they've basically produced two puzzle packs themed around this. So there's sort of an introductory pack. We're going to release this on Patreon probably around the time that we close the monthly reward. So around the 20th, um, uh, there'll be a free pack available to everybody, which introduces the idea. And there's a few puzzles in there. And then there's uh, going to be a special pack for our patrons. We're really, really thankful. Um, to full deck, to missing a few cards, obviously to JC Goddard, Jeremy Dover, Round Planer, and also to Rock Rat Zero for contributing as well. And 
yeah, we really hope you enjoy it. I shall certainly be reading out the names of anyone who gets through um, the Patreon pack because that is going to be another serious solving effort, let me tell you. So a bit of a bonus this month um, and we really hope you enjoy it. Now, that's all I've got to tell you about. Let's get on with wisdom, shall we? And I will read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat along a main diagonal, marked in blue. So we've got to make sure that that diagonal has the digits 1 to 9 once each. And this diagonal has the digits 1 to 9 once each. Um, in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. And digits cannot repeat within a cage. So that's telling us that these four cells sum to 18. Obviously, they couldn't repeat. Um, oh, if given. Right, so OK, we've got a... We've got some unlabeled cages, W pentominoes in the grid here, with no numbers in them at all. So the point of these cages is the bit about digits cannot repeat within a cage. So whatever's in this cell could not, for example, appear in that cell, because if it did, a digit would repeat within a cage. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video, as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And unlike yesterday's beastly killer Sudoku by Bremster, I can at least tell you some things about this puzzle. There are a lot of 12 cages in it. And 12 cage in four cells must have a one and a two. Because imagine it only had a one, say. The other three digits would then be three, four, and five at a minimum. And three, four, and five add up to 12 on their own. So there must be in all of these 12 cages, ones and twos. Now I can see immediately in column nine, therefore, where are we going to put ones and twos? We're going to have to put them in those cells. Um, now, I can see something else that might be worth thinking about, which is let's actually study or re recall how many ways there are of making 12 in four cells. Now, you can do it with one, two, three, six or you can do it with one, two, four, five. There are only those two options. So imagine these two 12 cages had the same version of 12 cage, you know, if they were the same combination. So let's imagine they're both one, two, three, six. Well, that clearly gives us an enormous problem in column seven because we'd have six cells selected from just four different digits. Oh, hang on. So, OK, well, there's another thing we can note about that. So these have to be different versions of 12 cages, but also a 12 cage is only selectable from the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So where are we going to put 7, 8, 9 in this column? We're going to have to put them in those cells. So that's a 3, 4 or 5. And these are different. I am tempted. I know I don't need much excuse, but I'm going to colour them in. Um, just to remind me that they're different. Now, ah, yeah, okay, there's something else we can say about these cages. These cages are giving a lot of, well, they're giving us a lot of wisdom. Um, what are these two cells? Now, surely they have to be ones and twos, because because we know there's a one and a two in each of these sequences. So imagine I put the one and the two in the purple cage in those three cells. Well, then the one and the two in the blue cage would both have to be in this cell. And there are no such things in Sudoku, or not, not at least in normal Sudoku, as Schrodinger cells. You cannot sim um, simultaneously make this cell a one and a two and sort of have it oscillate. Um, that will not work. So that means that these two digits are going to have to be a one and a two pair. Now, so, ah, ooh, okay. So something is going on now with this 12 cage. That digit, let's make that yellow for a moment, must be in one of those two cells. Um, and right, there's definitely something going on here. 
this 11 cage is also catching my eye because well it's not that different from a 12 cage obviously we can ask the question has it got a 1 or a 2 in it and the answer is yes because otherwise it would be a minimum of 3 plus 4 plus 5 which is 12 yet it doesn't have that digit in it so it does have yellow in it so yellow lives in there which means yeah ah okay yeah okay so i know now know that yellow's in one of those two cells i need to give this one a color really don't i let's make that one green so we've got a, a yellow green one two pair yellow can't go in the 18 cage anymore ah ah here you go right that's very important yellow can't go in the 18 cage and neither can green and that's because where does green go in this 12 cage we know it lives in there but it's not it can't repeat on the diagonal so green is in one of those cells but that means green these these two greens see the whole of this 18 cage just like these yellows see the whole of the 18 cage and if you can't put one or two in an 18 cage didn't we have this logic yesterday then it must be three four five and six i feel like i had a three four five six cage yesterday that might be i'm going crazy um but this is now a three four five six cage so so now right okay so now in column three we've got a seven eight nine triple as well because you can't put seven eight or nine in a 12 cage which means this cell is three four or five by sudoku well by maths i suppose um so now i've got a seven eight nine triple on the positive diagonal because look i've got six cells that can't contain seven eight and nine so those three cells must contain seven eight and nine. Oh, um well the 14 cage must either be 5 9 or 6 8 actually a 6 cage must be 1 2 4 or 5 maybe we can ah no um, probably not so there's almost something going on in row 8 now these five cells have, are, have all got to be selected from digits no higher than 6 but unfortunately there are only five of them so we can't say at least i don't think we can say that we know anything more than that so perhaps we have to we know that that's a one or a two um hmm. hang on let me just think about this I know that this cell is not a one or a two, don't I? Because actually it sees both colors of ones and twos. So this cell must be three, four, five, or six. Right, oh, okay. And that makes sense. So this cell is appearing in one of those three cells. And in this row, we, ah, we know that cell is not a one or a two because it sees yellow and it sees green so that cell is also three four five or six that's interesting for the 11 cage isn't it i can't write okay yeah i know there's a one or a two in this 11 cage from my coloring but i now know that there can't be two middly digits in there well by middly digits i mean threes fours fives and sixes because if there were two three four fives and six in my 11 cage i'd have four cell five cells in the row that that had to be selected from just four different digits so so at least what well no not at least exactly one of these digits has to be from seven eight or nine and we know it's we know it's not nine you can't put nine double one in an 11 cage and in fact you can't put eight into this 11 cage because if you did you'd have to put a one two pair there and then that cell's got no value so in fact this the 11 cage is seven one three exactly 
which means that's which means we know what green is green is two and we know this isn't three so now we know that oopsie uh, we know that yellow is one which means i get a one here we can take ones out of here we have a digit um we know that okay so this is not two now the yellow is the one so we've got ones in one of those and twos in one of these we've got an eight nine pair in row two just to complete that we've got no three in those cells we've got a three vertically in column three now does that mean that no it doesn't mean that has to be a three um, because uh, this might not be a one, two, three, six cage. It might be a one, two, four, five cage. But, okay, here's something. Look on the positive diagonal. Where is six on the positive diagonal? It can't be here. That's the thing I think I've just noticed. If you put six there, because this digit has to be high, well, not high, midly, but not three, this cage would be too high. These, these, this domino adds up to at least 10. So that means that the six on this diagonal is in this 12 cage, which is lovely because that means that this 12 cage is one, two, three, six, which means this square is not four or five. It means these squares are one, two, three, six. We know that the six is on the diagonal. Ah, uh, we know there's a, ah, uh, here we go. We know there's a three up here. Yeah, so this is a three. Sorry, that was obvious. I was a bit slow to that. Um, and that means this is a six, which means there's no six up here, which means this is a six. And as Maverick comes to try and put me off, he's too late. I've got somewhere here. Now, okay, we've got a one here. So this is one, this is two, which means that we can get rid of the green. We now know this is the green we we've got a three on this diagonal so we've got a four five pair oh we've got a four five pair in the middle box which of course means well not only does this mean that this is not a five so that's not a nine anymore but it also means those two squares are not nine because they must be the counterparts to four and five in 12 cages and actually that's Ah, here, right, here's something really beautiful. You're going to like this. You're going to like this. So let's just have a quick think about this. We know that these are seven and eight, but we know more than that. We actually know they're a pair. They're different. And they're different because these are different. Now, if these are different digits, let's make one of them red and one of them orange. If these are different digits, what are these cells? And the answer is the answer is nine. They both have to be nine because they both see a seven, eight pair because these are different. They're both looking at that cell and that cell. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so that's that's doing all sorts. Oh, OK. So where does nine go in this seven, eight, nine triple? I seem to have in the middle row. It goes there. That means the 14 cage is now a six, eight cage. must probably do something but I can't see what um, this is a seven eight but oh look I can color my sevens and eights that's got to be orange now because it's not red and that's going to be red so red is in one of those two cells and orange is in one of those two cells that might be worth recording let's keep track of that in case it becomes interesting. Now this cell can't be one or two anymore by Sudoku, so that cell is one or two. This is not two. Um, okay. And now what should we do next? How are we going to make more progress? We've almost used, ooh, well, I was going to say we've almost used all the cages. That's sort of true. I haven't really used these W pentominoes. 
The other thing I haven't used very well... Oh, look at that. The positive. I was thinking about the diagonals. I've just noticed I've got a 9 here. So I've now got a 7, 8. Ah, I've got a 7, 8 pair in the diagonals, they, which must be different. So can I colour these? Hmm, don't think so. Not sure, but I don't think I know which of these is red and which of these is orange. But this digit now must be known on the diagonal because I seem to have all the... So that's a 1, in fact. I haven't got a 1 on that diagonal. So therefore that is yellow, which means that is not yellow. Which means 1 is... Oh no, no it doesn't. I was about to say 1's in one of these two cells, but there's a 1 on, one on the diagonal. So 1 is here. 1 is in one of these three cells. These, these cells have now got to be uh, the other digits in box 1, which are 2, 7, 8 and 9. Two, seven, eight, nine. Now there's nine. Oh, we can get rid of nine on the diagonal. We can. What else can we do? Ah. Well. I can get rid of nine from here as well, because this shares a cage with a nine. Oh, God, right, this is beautiful. Right. Now, I may not be able to colour my 7s and 8s, but I do know that these are different numbers because they're on they're on the positive diagonal, so they can't be the same. Now, they're both looking at that cell in the corner, so that cannot be a 7 or an 8. If it is, you won't be able to put that digit on this diagonal. So that must be a 2, which means that that is not a 2, and that has to be the 2 in my 12 cage at the bottom. Uh, I know what I know what else we can do here actually. Oh, in fact, I've just found a seven eight nine triple in column one, which might be interesting. So yes, it is one two three. Yes, what are these two digits? They've got to be a four five pair by Sudoku because these two digits see a one two three six quadruple and they see a seven eight nine triple. So they have to be four five, which means these squares have to be from seven eight and nine. Which is nearly really interesting. Oh no, it's very interesting because that's that two rules itself out from there. Now I've got a seven eight nine triple in this column. Ah, yes, yes, and now I can colour. Right, look at the redness of this. That's in this. This is why this W pentomino's here. It's got. I can colour that. That's got to be orange. Which means red is in one of these. Oh, okay. Well, that right. So this being orange means these two are not orange, which means orange is in that corner, which of course means red is in that corner. Which... Well, I'm not sure if that's... Is that enough for me to know things about the nature of red? I don't know. I'm actually tempted to start um, sort of doing this sort of pencil marking because I know one of those is red can I do better than that hmm I'm not sure can I orange no I don't think so I think so. orange has still got Two possible positions in box uh, in box three. Obviously, if we know it's this one, then it would be great because we would know it has to be eight. Ah, but the other thing I was thinking I hadn't done, which was a bit remiss of me, is I hadn't pencil marked this cell, which has obviously got to be the counterpart to this that adds up to nine, because we've already got one and two in my 12 cage, so these two have to add up to nine. So this has to be three, four, or five, which, okay, no, that's not actually helpful. And whatever this is, this isn't. So that's nearly good, but not quite good enough. Ah, that's not, ah! Hey, hang on, that's not six, so that's not three. So this is a four-five pair. This is a this is not only a three-six pair, 
but that's a six there. So that's six, that's three. Which, is that doing anything? I can see six in box eight is in one of two places. Three in box eight though, I think has all three positions available in the bottom row. What about, ah, hang on, no. Where does three go in this box now? This three on the diagonal is really lovely. That plonks it up at the top, which means there's a three in this domino. Oh, where does four and five go on this diagonal? Well, they don't go in the middle box because there's a four or five pair already in the middle box. So that cell in the corner is four or five. That's the world's most use. Well, hmm, it's nearly a useless deduction. Oh, no. Right, this is good. This is... No, this, this is really good, actually. Okay. Now let's come back and look at the negative diagonal again, where I haven't put seven and eight onto it. So seven and eight have to go into those two squares. And if they have to go into those two squares, we can remove the coloring from those two cells. We know that that is orange and that is red by coloring. And now, right, well now there's a seven, eight pair looking at that cell. So that's got to be six. That's got to be eight. Therefore, we've now learned orange is seven. Fab that's just, it's really good, isn't it? Ah, if orange is seven, it's not in that cell. So that's got to be seven. That's got to be eight. That loses its orangeification. Um, red is eight now, so we can fill that in wherever we, wherever we can be sure about it. Um, I don't think I can be sure about that. One of these has got to be eight. Uh, can we do, oh, nearly. Yeah, okay, there's, there is something more. Look at eight in this box. It's got to be in one of those two cells. Now, I think it can possibly be in this W pentomino, but we can still ask the question where, where red goes in row eight. It can't be in these three now, and it can't be in these three. So it's in one of those two, and there's an eight here. So that gets eighted. That's of, oh, I, hang on. I didn't, because I didn't color this, I didn't see it was looking over there. So that's now got to be the red eight, hasn't it? In box one, which means this square is now a nine by Sudoku. So nine is in one of those two cells. How many eights have we got? We'd, I think we're just left with these two and these two. So maybe I don't know, maybe we're going to have to get the nines in box seven in order to unwind all the eights. Can't see how to do that. Uh, let's instead think about seven is definite. Let's think about sevens then. What do we know about sevens? Do we know about seven in box nine is in one of two positions? We've got a one, two, three triple to place in box five, which is nearly getting something done, isn't it? But not quite. Uh, okay. Right, these digits in column one, we now know what they are. They are one, three, and six which means these digits have got to be two, four, and five. We don't know very much about twos, fours, and fives, though, I don't think. Although we could start thinking about coloring them at some point. That's a nine by Sudoku. Ah, oh no. Oh, this is good. No, this is good. Right, nine here, nine here. So there's a nine in one of those squares where I suddenly thought, oh no, I've got an eight, nine deadly pattern, but I haven't because of this W pentomino. So that's why this W pentomino is here. This nine now communicates with its neighbor here, tells it not to be a nine. So that's eight, that's nine, that's nine, that's eight. That's therefore redified. Um, we should get rid of the coloring in this one, fix that one. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I've done all nine eights. How many nines have I done? Quite a lot, but not all of them, but I think I can get all of them because that one and that one get fixed. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've done all the nines. Okay. So those two digits are now a three, six pair just by our old friend Sudoku, which means six in box um, uh, two has to go exactly here because of this six and this three, six pair. This is a four or a five. Six is placed in the bottom row. It's got to go here. So now, have I done all the sixes? No, I've nearly done them all. Looks like, oh no, and I haven't done this one either. Ah, but I do know what these digits are now. These are fours, fives, and sevens. So we can almost say something interesting about column nine. I'm a bit worried now, though. It feels like I've suddenly hit a bit of a brick wall. Ah, where does seven go? In box eight. There we go. It's got to go there. So that's got to be seven. I get left with a one, three pair. And these squares have got to be twos, fours, and fives. Ah, okay. Right. So that's a two, four, five triple. But well, that's just the corollary of that being a three, six pair. I've got a four, five pair in column five. So this square has got to be one, two, or three. And it can't be one or two. So that's the three. Therefore, this is a one or a two. One of these is a three, which means that's not a three. Okay. I've got a four or five pair in row eight, so that's got to be a seven. How many sevens have we got? All of them. Oh, I see. Okay, and in box eight, look, we've got a one, two, four, five combo that we've got to figure out. So we might have to think about colouring the fours and fives. The only problem with that is how am I actually going to... Maybe the idea... In fact, let's let's get rid of all our colouring to this point. Um, and what I'm wondering is whether I, I should start by colouring the cells on the diagonal. So if I make that orange and that blue, then I might get coordination between the fours and fives which would be very handy indeed. So that's now orange, which means this is orange. So blue is in one of those three. But I need to get into this stuff. Ah, I can get, yes, I can do that. That's blue. So that's blue. So this is orange. One of these is orange. I don't think that's big news, is it? How do I get into the, oh. <laughs> Okay, well, it's not terribly difficult to get these two digits. Now I've got this um, seven here. Sorry, you've probably all been shouting at me about that, but I didn't spot it. I was too busy doing other things. So now all I've got to do is color these, and I'll be able to un I'll be able to color everything. So that's not four. That's not five. sure that this is in some way important. Uh, that's got to be orange. I've just no ah that's perfect. Look, that's orange because it's not blue. And that means that's orange, which means that's a four or a five and it's look, it's looking at this four. So that's it. There we go. Oh hang on I just want to do double click those. So they are fives. The blue ones are fours. Therefore the six must go with a two which means that's a one. We got a two three pair in this row which doesn't seem to resolve the world. We get a one here by Sudoku. So I get a one there, a three here, a three here, a two here. The two via the W pentomino gives me a five, four, and two into those squares. I've got this not being a one anymore. I've got three. What else have I got? Three, four, and six into this row. So the, where does the four go? It must go in the W pentomino. And this square is now a three or a six, which I don't think I can resolve yet. 
Okay, what about this row? Uh, one, five, six. So that's five or six. That's one or six. Oh, so the five in this row is placed, I see. Okay, last, last chance. Oh, although I've just noticed, look, I can do some more stuff in this box now. I can get the two here and the four here, but they don't, they're not going to impact on anything. So we need ones, twos, and threes. Ah, so that's three, there we go. That's three, that's three, that's six. That's six, that's three. So that means that's one, that's six, that's one, and that should be a two. And that's a very, very beautiful puzzle. Wow, wisdom indeed. I, I feel it was bestowed upon us by Clover and by Mean Rista, as usual. I mean, these two, they just make very beautiful puzzles. And when they combine their two heads together, you get something like this. What I liked about it was it had lots of themes going on. So it was very clear early on that the, the twelves were, were important. And I think that this, the whole idea that you can lock one and two out of this 18 cage is really, really pretty. But after that, what I, what I liked was that it became clear we, we were getting lots of sevens and eights. So I started to think about those. And when you coloured them, we learned things like this cell had to be a two. Um, I can't remember what else we learned, but it felt like colouring sevens and eights was a natural thing to do. And it yielded some nice surprises. And then later on, it was colouring fours and fives. Although I'm not sure whether I needed to do that. I suspect if I'd noticed these 12 gauges a bit earlier, I might have not, uh, not had to do any more colouring. But you know me, I'm chromatically minded. Um, thanks for watching. I do enjoy the comments, so please drop one in. Uh, I enjoy them even more when they're kind. And um, please like the video, etc. Please subscribe. We are heading up towards 500,000 subscribers, which is such a ludicrous total. I cannot tell you, <laughs> but we really aren't that far away. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.